Hey guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to a live stream where uh, I really just couldn't think of a better way to unbox this because it is such a behemoth and unfortunately a review just doesn't feel adequate since it's not something that you guys can go out and buy right now unless you want to pay the outrageous aftermarket prices that I'm sure have already popped up all over eBay and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, I figured a live stream would be a great way to just unbox this, appreciate it for what it is and take a look at all the wonderful uh, details packed inside of it. So give me one second here. I'm just getting some stuff set up and then we will take a look at this amazing, amazing offering from HasLab, the Hasbro fan-backed project. We'll see how this goes. There we go. All right. So yeah, I mean, there's the shipper box. This is how it comes. It just ships with a giant cardboard box. And I mean, for context, here is my hand. I mean, this thing is absolutely huge. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm excited. So, I mean, there's not much to say here. This is a cardboard box. Let's get this out of the way. And um, let's see about getting this thing out of here. Just gonna slowly. <laughs> It's a, it's a very snug fit. They made this box have no room for actual uh, room to breathe, room to even pull it out, but that's fine. I mean, that's, that's good packaging, I suppose. And yes, I am unboxing this in my living room, not my usual studio setup, because my desk is not large enough for this. <laughs> so here on the, I guess this is like the blueprint side, we have this really cool black and white rendering of the Razor Crest with the Mandalorian Baby Yoda, Kuil, I can never pronounce his name, and uh, IG-11, which... I haven't gotten him yet. I do have IG-11. Obviously, you get Mando and Baby Yoda with this set, so you're set in that regard, at least. And then, let's see. How's the best way to do this? There's that side. That side is the full-color production photography. Absolutely beautiful work by the uh, photo team there. I mean, I know some people will be saving this box art, Think everybody's pretty much saving this box but i know some people will be putting the box art behind their display just because it looks so good uh displayed that way i don't think i have the room for that unfortunately but uh, you know it's just good to appreciate the work that went into this on the uh on the front sides here it's the same on both it just showcases what you're getting in terms of some detail shots the cockpit the ramp the uh the place where baby Yoda sleeps, <laughs> the escape pod, uh, and other details. I mean, you, we'll get the gist of all this when we have it in hand, of course, but I mean, the box alone is just amazing. Uh, the artwork is good, but this as a package, like I can, I can just understand now why this wouldn't work well on a retail store shelf, unfortunately, because it would take up a lot of space and much as I would prefer that this was a mainline store release, I think that this is where it really deserved to be, especially since this is the main ship of the show, right? Like, everybody would want this, but yeah, lo and behold, it was a HasLab project, and we could debate all day long whether or not it should have been, but here it is. So I guess let's just break it right on open and take a look at what we get in terms of assembly here. Slide it on down. I know it probably sounds horrible that I'm sliding it, but uh, it's it's really okay. Trust me. <laughs> so there's that. Cut that end open. And we reveal styrofoam. How exciting. Once again, I really don't know how best to... Uh, hmm. We can surely... I'm trying to keep up with the chat as well, so while I'm unboxing this, but... Uh, 
this thing already has increased in price. Because if you think about it, the HasLab project is a finite project. They're not making more of these. This is all there is. So I want to say there was like 30,000 and some odd people that backed it. So you can expect that that's how many units were made. And there's never going to be more, presumably. So just like the Sail Barge and the other HasLab projects like the Sentinel, it's going to go up in price rather quickly, I believe. I've already seen people asking about 700 for it on the like Facebook groups. So yeah, it's going to it's going to go up, and uh, I mean you can only expect you know in five ten years this will be even more valuable, presumably. This is the only way I can paint to do this because I just I don't get it. It's a big cardboard box. My, my, my. Okay, so yeah, this has been the whole trick of this live stream is like, where do you put this giant box and how do you display it well? Yeah, <laughs> this is part of it. You're just getting this big block of styrofoam. And already there's some early little reveals here. So first off, we're gonna pull out some of the carbonite here. It looks like, here, let me get, a, let me get this light around a little bit further for you, everybody. There we go, kind of. We have a Rodian in carbonite and we have the uh, the fish man, I can't remember what his name is. We actually have a vintage collection figure of him now, so that's cool. We never see the Rodian outside of Carbonite. He's just one of those unlucky folks who gets frozen. So there's the first two items. Looks like the rest of these are like uh, landing gear and other assemblies. I'll show those up close in a bit. A leg there, another landing gear here. We have some instructions and aha, <laughs> we have the, the base for this thing. Let's see here. I mean, if you wanted to do a destroyed Razor Crest HasLab, you really could just take this and hit it with a hammer a couple dozen times. And you'd probably get the gist of it. I mean, you know, it's that's how it is, you know? Or just buy the Lego set and dump it out. I, I know many people have made that joke, but it's kind of accurate. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that guy was freed, wasn't he? Um, I couldn't really remember. But yeah, this, this guy does eventually get out of carbonite. Thank goodness. I'm not sure that that would be a terribly pleasant experience. And I think now we just got to crack this uh, styrofoam open. I think all the good stuff is going to be at the heart of the styrofoam. That really didn't work. That just gave me like one small little strip of tape to come off there. All right, let's, let's layer down here. Man, they, uh, they made this childproof apparently because the tape just does not want to come undone. There we go. I'm not concerned about saving the tape. I will be saving all the packaging and everything for this because obviously it has value in that sense, but the rest I don't really care about. Ooh, that was satisfying. <laughs> that tape pull that just went all the way around, that's very, very satisfying. Uh, they didn't give who a name. The, oh, is Mithril his, just his species? I always thought that was his name, because that's what his name is on the vintage collection card, but I guess I was wrong. 
All right, let's move the camera down just a wee bit and see if we can't get some better lighting here. Again, unfortunately, this isn't my normal studio lighting, so it's a little bit jankier than usual, but we will make do. And the reveal. Ta-da! Oh, man, this... <laughs> This looks really, really amazing. Um, it's huge, obviously. The, the, the Razor Crest runs the length of that packaging that you saw earlier, apart from maybe like an inch just because of the styrofoam on each end. But overall, I mean, that's the size of it. It's, it's as big as you would think, I suppose. First up, you have these really nice clear acrylic... Uh, Support stands, those attached to the base and allow you to have the really cool, like, soaring off into space pose for the ship. And we're just going to set those to the side for now, assuming they just kind of snap in there. <clears throat> then we have two more carbonite, uh, yeah, two more carbonite people. These two are actually humans, it appears. There's a, a woman here with, like, a bandolier. And then there's a guy with uh, some sort of like, I don't know, armor on his chest plate there. It's hard to say for sure. We didn't really get a good look at the other characters that were in the Carbonite. So presumably these are from the show from Lucasfilm, you know, directly to Hasbro. But yeah, two more, two more Carbonite things. Two more Carbonite uh, bounties, I suppose, would be the correct terminology there. Um, the... Uh, the, uh, the price for this was, uh, I'm trying to remember now, because there was some tax and stuff. It was under 400 once it all came together with, with tax and everything combined. But I think initially it was like 345 and then you just tack on tax and all the other, you know, stuff that comes with ordering. There is one of the side turbo lasers. The paint apps here are really nice, actually. Like, there's a little bit of brass here, and then there's all the silver, and then the silver is covered in a paint wash, so it kind of brings out some of the sculpt details. Overall, that just looks amazing. <clears throat> um, first, this is the first official figure we have here. We actually have the Beskar Mandalorian. I forgot that he doesn't come on a card. He is he is just free-floating in there, just chilling. Uh, <laughs> So he doesn't get any kind of uh, exclusive card back. He is just the figure, because I think all the figures we got were stretch goals. So this guy was just kind of thrown in there. Uh, I mean, there is some exclusivity. He does have a soft goods cape, which looks pretty decent. Like, it's got some holes punched in there. Uh, it kind of, it, it drapes on his body more so like a proper cape than his cape in the show. His his cape in the show really is just like off the back. It doesn't do much around here at the neck, but because it's three and three quarter inch scale and because it is, you know, it's soft goods at that scale, you can't really get them thinner. So it does kind of bunch up around the neck, but overall, I mean, it's a, it's a cool figure. I haven't, have I? No, I don't have the best Gar Mandalorian yet in vintage collection. So I can't really say for sure if this is the same as the standard release, the single card release, but it's Beskar Mandalorian. It looks pretty good to me. They've gotten the sculpt accurate. Unlike the Black Series, they didn't reuse the shin, so he doesn't have the, the armor there or anything like that. Like, this is this is pretty solid, I think. Overall, I'm, I'm a fan. I will still try and get maybe, like, the single-carded version that comes with the spiders because I need the spiders for the Razor Crest. But this is a good release, and if you don't have one, um, and I mean, if you order the Razor Crest and you don't have one already, well, you get a Mandalorian included. So, I mean, that's, that's nice. But I think, I think by the end of the year, pretty much everybody's going to have at least one Mandalorian because they have released so many different versions just in the last couple of months. So, I mean, yeah, you're, you're going to be lucky one way or the other. Uh... Yeah, the, I mean, buying this thing new is obviously the only way to get a decent price on it. The aftermarket price is going to be stupidly insane. So, you know, the only way you're going to get this for a decent price is if you ordered it already through the, uh, through the HasLab project. And that's actually precisely why I'm doing a live stream instead of doing 
an unboxing because, or like a review because uh, you're not gonna probably go out and buy this. I mean, somebody might be crazy enough to do that, but I would assume that most of the wonderful people that follow me here on the channel aren't going to be the ones to go and spend $1,000 on the Razor Crest in the aftermarket, and I wouldn't advise you to do that. It's just not, uh, it's not a wise investment, I don't think. But yeah, so far we have a, we have a jet pack here for Mando. We have his, his little side arm there. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. Back in the holster. He has his sidearm. All of these are really so well detailed. Like the paint apps on this figure are amazing. Even the back of his belt has a silver paint hit there. The jetpack is just solid color. I wish it was a little bit more silver than like the gunmetal gray that they used, but you know, not a, not a huge deal there. Um, and then of course he has his what is this, like a pulse rifle? I can't remember what they technically called this, but he has his rifle. And while you can't sling it on his back when he has the jetpack, if you take the jetpack off, it can go right into there. It's, it's always hard to do these types of things on a live stream because you don't get quick edits. You don't get, you know, oh, cut away because it's taking too long. You got to try and do it as quickly as possible. But there you go. That slings onto his back, and I would assume that the jetpack and the figure, at least the base figure, are the same as the Vintage Collection single carded, so you're, you're easy, you're easy, or there's an easy way to get this for yourself, um, the figure at least, and I'd say it's a pretty solid figure. Uh, you know, the original Mandalorian was good, this one is good as well. I'm going to try and catch up a little bit here on chat. Hey, Jay guys, how's it going? Do you see a Razor Crest? You do indeed. The Razor Crest. Uh, Golden Pro, I'm grinding for clones. I doubt I'm gonna get Mando. That's fair. You know, if you wanna focus on one area of your collection, like, a, like the clone troopers, that's what I did for a very long time. I debated for a very long time whether or not to even get this because most of my collection, most of my content here on YouTube is clone trooper related, though I have gone into the Halo realm a little bit recently, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's fine to do whichever one you want to do. You, you don't, don't feel pressured by any video on YouTube or anybody's post like, oh, like fear of missing out, right? Don't, don't be pressured by that to go buy something that you don't actually want. If you want a Mandalorian, go get one. But if you want to like focus on clone troopers, focus on clone troopers, you know, it's a, it's fine. Whatever you want to do. Um, let's see what else. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Hello, box of clone troopers. How's it going? I wish I would have bought one. Yeah, you know, a lot of people did, a lot of people didn't, and that's partially what's driving up the aftermarket prices. There's always going to be somebody that didn't have the money at the time, and maybe does now, and so, you know, unfortunately, that's what's that's how it works. That's how the aftermarket works. And I don't see it necessarily as scalping when people buy a limited production item and then sell it for more. That's just pure supply and demand. And again, I wish that this was a mainline release from Hasbro for the price. Uh, again, like 350, I think was the buy-in for this project for the price. When you compare it to like the Boba Fett throne room, they just announced that's $230. It's like, well, why couldn't, I mean, that's a, that's a mainline release. Why couldn't this also be a Hasbro Pulse exclusive mainline release? It just makes more sense to me. But again, I'm not on the side of production. I'm not on the side of uh, profitability for the company. Cause at the end of the day, it's all about making profits. It's not about making toys. So there's elements like that that have to be considered when saying like, man, I wish this was on store shelves at Walmart. You know, Walmart probably wouldn't want this size of a box on their shelves. So, you know, it, it, it's, there, there's more, more at play than just a, a simple toy being produced. It's, it's, it's all politics. It's like the prequels. They're all politics, you know? So let's, uh, no, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to save those three pieces of the Razor Crest. We're going to dive in first to what we have here. I like that everything is like daintily wrapped in tissue paper. Like it's so, it's so special. The exclusivity here is very apparent in terms of what you're getting out of the packaging here. So first up we have the off-world Jawa Elder. 
Arvala 7. So I guess that's the planet that they were on during the Mudhorn episode. And this is a mainline release with exclusive elements. So the card back is exclusive to the Razor Crest. Some of the accessories, I think the cut open egg and the knife are the two exclusive items for this particular figure. And it actually comes unpunched, which is cool. Uh, that's a desirable feature for people that collect on card card backs or on card figures rather. And yeah, I, I've found a couple, but it's very uncommon because usually either they come in the case without that or employees when they're putting it on the pegs, pop that little tab out. So I think everyone that gets the Razor Crest is getting an unpunched card. So that doesn't really add to the value of this figure, but this figure does have a decent amount of resale value already just because it's from the Razor Crest. I'm not selling anything, oopsies. And now it's worth less. No, I didn't damage it, but uh, I'm not selling anything from this. I, I'm just talking value because I think some people are curious about what, uh, you know, what the aftermarket is on this, you know, because some people missed out on it or whatever and might be looking to get their hands on some of these items. And personally, I think that that's kind of, it's kind of crazy. The price is kind of crazy for the aftermarket. It won't ever come down, I don't think, but I think that the price paid for the project was fair. I think the aftermarket is just a little bit outside of my price range for what I would spend on toys, to, uh, to say it that way, I guess. And, ooh, this is just kind of a cool, like, I feel like it's kind of like, like an antique store or something, and you're like, ah, here's, here's an original 1700s copy of, I don't know, Edgar Allan Poe. I don't... I don't think Edgar Allan Poe wrote in the 1700s, but you know what? For historical jokes sake, he did. That's right, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful specimen. And if you take it into Pawn Stars, they'll give you like a buck 50 for it, you know? So yeah, this is the exclusive <clears throat> Grogu or Baby Yoda with the, I believe, actual metal pram. So I, I will open this up on stream. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I will open this up on stream and take a look at this more closely, but I'm 90% I'm sure that that is in fact metal. So there's, <clears throat> goodness. I need to take a drink of water apparently. <laughs> yeah, Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda was the source of many memes. <clears throat> most of which I was wholeheartedly annoyed with by the end of season one. <laughs> All the, uh, all the chicken nuggies and chalky milk memes, just, I couldn't take it anymore. I, I could not take it anymore. I'm not saying I sided with the bike scout that punched Baby Yoda, but I'm saying he may have been partially justified. That's all. I'm a reasonable man. <clears throat> well, I think people called it Baby Yoda because we didn't really have a species name and we also didn't know its name until uh, season two, right? So, you know, it made sense. It made sense to have some nickname for the creature or the child, as the show called him. And I think that's all the parts. So I think we're down to just the Razor Crest. I'm actually going to uh, move this forward a little bit. Lift out the behemoth. Set it there. We have a little, ooh, ooh, this is cool. As someone who loves little accessories, this bag is filled with accessory goodness. These are all the blasters, backpacks, and random things that actually get stored inside of the Razor Crest. So we have that. <clears throat> and then we have two gigantic engines. And those, those almost look, <laughs> those almost, those sort of look like Lego Technic pins, just scaled up massively to fit the Razor Crest. But that's what it reminds me of, some like Bionicle parts or something. Get that styrofoam out of the way. <clears throat> and there's the first one. This... First of all, this has a decent heft to it. Like, it's just a giant piece of molded plastic, and it is 
probably molded in multiple different pieces because you got some screws fixing it all together. But I mean, it's got a lot of weight to it. It's got very good sculpt detail. You can just see all the little greebles and things like that that are going on here. And then it's all covered in a nice paint wash to give it some, some grime, some grit. You know, it's a very old, it's a Clone Wars era gunship from, from the show's lore. So it's definitely got to have some grime, some grit to it. It's been used for bounty hunting for who knows how long. You have some nice translucent orange pieces in there. I don't know how well you can see that, but some nice pieces there that give it a cool engine effect. And by the looks of things, actually, hang on a second. I'm gonna move this light a little bit more directly behind the camera. I feel like that's gonna help help out some of this lighting problem that we're having here. That's a little bit better. And all right, dude, I, or wait, I'm just seeing it now. Golden Pro, I will catch you later. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Really appreciate that. Um, I could be, I don't know what this little orange dot is, but it just reminds me of like a sound effect button. It doesn't do anything, unfortunately, but it makes me think of like, are there lights and sounds with this? Were there going to be lights and sounds with this? You just never know. Um, where was it? There it is. Right here. I'm going to be very careful. Yeah, there we go. That piece lifts off, and you can see all of the engine details in there. Looks really cool. That's also been hit with a paint wash. And then that panel can just snap back on. Like, let's see here. I saw on Yak Face that some people had broken theirs already, uh, some of the hinges, so I'm being especially careful with mine. And then there's another panel right here. So this is kind of fun because you can, I guess you could have a display where the Jawas are like tearing it to pieces and like, taking all these panels off and things. That could be fun. That could be a cool display. Definitely a unique way to display it because I think everybody wants to display it like, oh cool, it's the Razor Crest with the Mandalorian. Uh, but that's kind of like a, oh no, the Jawas are tearing apart your spaceship display. I think there's a lot of ways you could have fun with this. And also there's a lot of ways that this is going to be used for toy photography, which I'm especially excited to see as well. 30 minutes in, you still haven't assembled it. Dude, I'm taking my time. This is, this is a, uh, this is a museum quality piece. What are you talking about? But yeah, I mean, these, these turbines are huge. It looks like they are just, uh, mirrored so i mean both have the same panel that's going to lift off here again i'm kind of nervous just there we go i don't want to break anything but there's another panel that lifts off there another panel up here that lifts off and same engine effects things like that pretty awesome i gotta get those back on <laughs> a tweezer is the best way to open those panels that actually makes sense i should invest in a high quality tweezer for my, for my razor crest. But it's cool. Like, you know, if you're, I suppose if you're in the financial position where you could buy this for your child, this is, this is built with a lot of play features. The removable panels are a great play feature. The, just the overall build quality feels like it's durable, like the old Hasbro vehicles. So there's, there's potential here beyond just as a collector's piece. If you're I guess a, a wealthy adult and you're willing to spend that much on your, on your child. Uh, it's a cool piece for them as well. Like it's like a dollhouse for Star Wars fans, essentially. Uh, and there are some, I'm realizing now there are actually some inconsistencies here. Um, not inconsistencies, but asymmetries rather. The panels are actually in different locations. This one is down here, whereas this one is on the top. And then there's like a missing section of the turbine on this left one, and that's really cool. So they didn't just like copy and paste it over. They've actually gone ahead and done detailed and presumably accurate <clears throat> sculpt work on all the different parts here. So I love to see that, but I think I think what you all would love to see is the the reveal of the Razor Crest itself. The beauty of the Razor Crest. Let's start unwrapping this. From right here, let's recenter that camera frame though, because got to get all of it, all of it in frame. There we go. 
I'd rather buy my kids the new PlayStation 5 than a toy that's $700. I mean, that's fair, but hey, if you bought this originally, it wouldn't have been $700. It would have been like $350. So, you know, uh, you know how it goes. I wouldn't spend money like this on younger me. I was, I was a terror with my old millennial, Millennium Falcon back in the day. If only I knew how much it'd be worth one day. Yeah, dude. The, the amount of figures that I had in my collection that I painted and customized and chopped up or the dog chewed up, it, it, it would probably make people nowadays sad. But you know what? The important thing is that it was a toy and it was enjoyed as a toy and people had fun. You know, I had fun with sticks and stones and I had fun with Star Wars action figures and I don't really regret the ones that got destroyed, even the rare ones. Like, I had fun with them and they were toys and at the end of the day, you know, that's just, that's what they were supposed to be. I don't know if it's a crime that I'm tearing this wrapping paper. Like, is this like $700 wrapping paper right here? Like, is this, could I put this on eBay and be like, official Razorcrest tissue paper, $900, and, and probably sell it for more than that. But you know what? I don't care. <laughs> you can't save everything. And this is what we're here for, the Razorcrest, not the tissue paper. So let's... My, 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 <laughs> this, this is just heavy. This is a hefty, hefty vehicle to hold in hand. It's also very hard because I'm like extending my arms all the way out. So this is a nice workout, just holding the, raz the razor crest. But as you can see, just the overall paint detail here is incredible. There's individual paint app strikes like here on these little panels on the engine portion, but then there's also, again, that wash that covers all of it with that really nice grime and just, it really, it makes it not feel like plastic. I guess that's the way to put it because if it was not painted, it would be really shiny, look very plasticky, but with the wash, it looks so good. So very, very good. Uh, we'll set that there. We gotta get these engines attached because I don't think you can really appreciate it without the, uh, the full engines. Oh, let's see. Just really quick, I'm going to catch up with chat. Hopped in for a couple of you. Enjoy, man. Already looks mag magnificent. Thanks for stopping by, dude. I really appreciate that. Um, remember when I was a younger kid, $50 to drop on my 2.75-inch uh, Republic gunship? I deeply regret that decision. Um, yeah, dropping the gunship probably would hurt it, though, I mean, the plastic is... Uh, Fairly durable, right? Or did it break? Did the did the fifty dollar bet not pay off and your gunship broke? I'm trying to figure out where are we going with this. This needs to go on that side, or or maybe maybe. Hmm. I wonder if there was some sort of paper pamphlet that would tell me where everything's supposed to go. Aha! Look at that. Look at all these fancy details about where things go and how they're supposed to be. All right, gotta look at that down here now. Heftier than the Hefty brand? I dare say that a Hefty brand uh, garbage bag would probably struggle to, to hold all of this magnificence. And I mean that sincerely, like this thing, <laughs> this thing would probably break a garbage bag with how, with how just heavy and obtuse, obtuse it is. It's very obtuse. There we go, there's the first engine installed. It doesn't have any kind of like satisfying click. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was gonna say, maybe it just kind of like friction fits together, that way you can disassemble it for storage. But it seems like it actually has a pretty substantial hold with those like oversized Lego Technic pins. And there we go with that one. Oh my goodness, it is so tricky to hold this in frame. I mean, this, <laughs> it's just, it's massive. It's an incredibly massive vehicle. And obviously this is like a centerpiece item. Like this is something that's gonna go in the center of someone's collection, unless they're insane and they have other centerpieces that are larger, but good grief. Here, let's actually, we're gonna lower the camera once again, just to get this thing back into frame. It's just, it's really awesome. Um, in terms of like, okay, so if you're, if you're familiar with like a gunship, like a Republic gunship from Hasbro, this would be two of them, both in heft and weight and also in size. It's about two gunships 
in length, and it's about one gunship, maybe one and a half gunships wide in terms of wingspan. But yeah, the 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 size of this comes from the bulk of the plastic. It's a very like hard plastic. It doesn't feel hollow, and probably because it does have a uh, full interior. And then it's also its length. It's like what 36 or 39 inches long. So you do need a lot of space lengthwise to uh, to hold it all together there. I <laughs> the thing that I'm getting at is like I don't know. I want to showcase all these little panels, but I feel like there's just so many. Like every square inch of this vehicle is some sort of panel that pops open and reveals a engine component or like right here we have the, uh, probably the most important panel, we have the little drop down landing platform thing so that the Mandalorian can actually walk down, pop these back in. So there's that and that actually has a little extension ramp at the end. Just overall, this is incredibly detailed. I'm, I would have loved to have been on the team that actually designed this because every little function, every detail has so many moving parts to it. So much sculpt work went into this as well. Maybe there's like a cheat where they could just pull directly from Lucasfilm and, you know, just like, oh, there's the model they used in the show and bam, there it is, now it's a toy. But I feel like this was handcrafted with a lot of love from the Star Wars team over at Hasbro. They get a lot of hate for various things from various fans. This is one thing that I think nobody can, can hate on. Even if you maybe disagree with it being a HasLab project and wish it was mainline like myself, the, the work that went into this, the detail and the quality, it cannot be ignored. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I'm very pleased with it. Um, let's see. Anything going on with what you guys are talking in chat? I don't know what you guys are talking about in chat. I'm looking at a Razor Crest. It's hard to keep up with both, so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue on here. Uh, we have these turbo lasers which snap onto the side, and let me make sure. Let me make sure that I put those on correctly. This one goes on to this side, and those are nice and ratcheted they lock into place so they can't tilt down but they can tilt upwards you can kind of hear them like snap into place when you do that just like that um kind of want to get the landing gear on just so that i can have it displayed off the ground a little bit <clears throat> let's see here on the bottom <clears throat> on the bottom my goodness it's really tricky to to hold this, I'm just gonna try and put these on maybe off screen just to make sure I don't try and uh, do something silly and drop it or something like that. There's one landing gear in place. <clears throat> and I wanna say these other ones, how do you actually, I'm not really sure how to pop out these, cause there's two panels right here and those are the, or right here rather, <laughs> right here is where the side landing gear attaches. But I don't know for the life of me how to open those up. So maybe we're just going to ignore them for right now. That's the beauty and the pain of doing a live stream because if you don't know something beforehand, especially when you're doing an unboxing, um, well, you're kind of, Straight out of luck in terms of streamlined happenings. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so those, those trap doors are actually two trap doors. So you just gotta find the separation, pop it open there, pop it open there, and then the landing gear slides into those grooves and Oops, I'm probably putting that one on the wrong, there we go, I'll put it on the wrong side. And then there's another one around here somewhere. Magnificent, okay. So now, I 
can set on landing gear. That's much better. Keeps it from just sitting on the, uh, on the counter there and possibly getting scratched up on the bottom. Though it's unlikely, I just wanna make sure that it doesn't happen. This is the Razor Crest after all. We want to make sure that it has only the finest granite countertops to be sitting on, you know? Gotta make sure it's safe. Where's my Razor Crest? Is it safe? Is it all right? All right, let's do a quick little, quick little pose here. Cause like you got this, got this cool little drop down, right? It goes down there and then you can just put Mando right there, right there in the doorway. Have him walk down the stairwell and I don't know, repair the ship or something. Now there was one thing, me and Galactic Battlefront over on Instagram, we were talking about this. And this is kind of where my opinion on it being a HasLab versus a mainline release come in. For a HasLab, I would have liked this to be scale accurate to the show. And as you can kind of see, it it's just a little bit undersized, I think. It's not quite scale accurate. And that makes it feel like a gunship, like a Republic gunship, which is horrendously undersized when you think about the term, like the scale of figures and everything. So it feels like a mainline toy release, yet it's not, it's, it's a HasLab project. And I don't know how to feel about that. The fact that it's undersized, it's huge. And if it was actually properly scaled, I probably wouldn't have room for it. But uh, I don't know. It just feels like for a premium HasLab project, I would have preferred it to be scaled up just enough or keep it this scale and bring it to a mainline release or a Has, uh, Hasbro Pulse exclusive release, something like that. I don't know. It's, it's tricky, but I'm still pleased with it. I enjoy the scale um, at, for what it is, but I think that it's like my biggest gripe is that for a HasLab project, I would have wanted this to be to scale and not underscaled because when it's underscaled, it feels more like a toy. It feels less like a, a centerpiece or a collector's item. All right, so then I'm looking here at the instructions because there's gotta be, there's a lot of little, little things, little stuffs that need to go inside of this. And I think to showcase it best, what we're gonna do, gonna take this back down. We're gonna remove that engine, which removing the engine is actually fairly straightforward, pretty easy, which I'm glad. Again, that's nifty for, uh, for storage purposes. Gonna set that right there. My guy, if it was any bigger, the entire table is gonna fall. I mean, exactly, like that's the thing. If it's, if it's this scale, it, this is really what they kind of had to do. I think the size probably would have deterred a lot of collectors if they'd made it to scale. It would have been cool, but it would have been very, very difficult. Okay, just gonna, I took your advice. You have some tweezers here now, so we're we're being very gentle with the removal of these side panels just to release them for the first time. They might be painted shut. You know, I want to be cautious with just the kind of, you know, anytime you open a figure for the first time, you got to be careful. Anytime you open a vehicle like this, you might want to be extra careful, you know? But I'm trying to figure out where all the, where are all the tabs? Hey, there it is. Don't worry, no HasLab Razor Crests were damaged in the filming of this live stream. So on the inside of that panel there, we have this really interesting wall with a, uh, a backpack or two, some other rigging, um, some like hooks and stuff. And I'm gonna have to look here at the instructions because I don't know what's supposed to go there. There's probably a ton of little accessories that are supposed to go there. Um, let's see. Well, we have, oh wait, there's more that opens up here. Hang on, move this forward. We have the ladder that takes him up to, up here. I don't wanna damage anything, but 
Aha, there's a button back here somewhere. Where's that button at? There is a button that releases the thing. Aha, there it is. The button releases the entire top panel. And so underneath here, we have this really cool feature with the carbonite clips, and that allows you to, we'll just do it with one here. It allows you, we'll just move this one down, clip it on just like that. And then you can align them off to the side like that. There's this little, you know, you can, goodbye. <laughs> You can clip it on there, it can move down there, or you can have them shuffled down to the end like that, which is where you'd be uh, like offloading the carbonite to whoever was claiming the bounty, but that's kind of where they store down there. And there are four clips. I would be curious to see if you could also put Han and carbonite in this, but um, I don't have that on hand right now, so I can't, can't test that live, but essentially, I don't, I mean, it shows, you can have all four lined up like that, but I'm gonna guess that they can't set side by side. Yeah, they, okay, yeah, they go like this. There we go. I'm, I'm gathering what's going on here. You guys are learning with me because it's a live stream and you kind of just figure it out as you go along. But they all can line up. There we go, just like that. So if you were looking down into the razor crest, you'd kind of have it like this, and you'd see all those carbonites hanging with the bounties. It's a really cool feature. And you know, again, as like, a, as like a toy play feature, that is really cool. You know, I can imagine a lot of kids are gonna wanna, you know, you could pop this panel open. So yeah, what you could really do here is, you have this like that with this side panel open. You can open up that like this and slide the carbonite. Let's see, it's, it's hard to do without being able to see where the track is, but let's see, you can, I mean, you can do it. I'm just trying to figure it out doing it blind here, but that one can slide down. Of course, you can open up this back panel like that. That slides there. There we go. Kind of got to do it back to front. Get that one out. And of course the top roof should really be uh, locked in place, but I mean, you get the idea. Like those carbonites can pull out, slide all the way to the end, and it's a really great play feature. There is a button that releases the thing, quotation by Rust Buck Collector. Yes, I'm very specific with my reviews. There is a button that releases the thing. Yeah, you know, this actually wouldn't be a bad thing to put inside of like a coffee table. Like, you know, people have done that with the $800 UCS Millennium Falcon. This would be a good uh, kind of thing. Like you could build a glass top coffee table, have this sitting underneath with like the figures around, maybe lay some sand down. There's a lot of possibilities with this. And I think that, I think that there are plenty of creative people that are going to do something like that with this. I don't think it's going to strictly be a collector's item. I think that there's going to be some cool projects. I know I, for one, am excited to see what guys like Empire Toy Works does with it because he bought the he bought the, uh, the sail barge and he ended up painting it up in some really gaudy like 90s colors, making it super cyberpunk and including it in his uh, his city. So definitely check out Empire Toy Works over on Instagram if you haven't already. He's a huge, huge inspiration of mine. Uh, and then there is, there is an escape pod, something we've never really seen in the show. And I'm just trying to figure out if there's another button that releases another thing here, or if I'm just expected to pry it open and hope that I don't break something, which it appears. Oh, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that pops open just like that. Escape pod, ooh, that is cool. Whatever that is, I mean, it's just, like circuitry and stuff, but that patterning is so cool. And nine times out of 10, that's gonna be covered by an escape pod. That's incredible. So there's that. 
And of course we have this escape pod, something we haven't seen used yet and we never will now because it got blown up. But it almost reminds me of like one of those comlinks, like from the Phantom Menace toy line where you have like the comlinks and the sound chips and you'd play it on those. That's, I think this is just a comlink. Like this could be used in cosplay or something, but it actually does open up. And of course you can put a figure inside. Let me just figure this one out too. Um, there we go. Opens up just like that. No big deal, nothing fancy inside. But if you felt so inclined, you know, you can stuff the Mandalorian in there, close it on up, and he can escape. That's, that's about as simple as it gets, I suppose. I do remember when I was a, when I was a, a young lad playing Lego, one of the things that we always did with Lego was any spaceship we made, we always incorporated an escape pod. For whatever reason, every, every ship we ever built had like some detachable element that was an escape pod. That was just something fun that we always, we would always do, me and my friends when we built Lego. But that can be just closed back up inside of here. And I guess like presumably the escape pod is accessed via this ladder. Like you climb up that ladder into there, or maybe that's the ladder into the cockpit. I really don't know. Because there is a ladder up to the cockpit that we see Mithril climb down, but I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't know what the canonical layout of this ship is supposed to be. But either way, I'm, I'm extremely impressed here. I'm loving every inch of this, just with the detail and the sculpt work and the paint apps. It's, it's truly incredible. And... Again, it's a labor of love done by the HasLab team. Absolutely love to see it, though. Uh, to see a team that's working together on a property that they love, like Star Wars, and bringing stuff like this to life, whether it's a HasLab or mainline release. We can argue that all day, but the, the end result of it is what we're looking at here today. And let's pop this open. Maybe. I should be the person that does with a coffee with, excuse me. I should be the person that does this with a coffee table. You say, I, I wouldn't mind doing that, but personally, I like it out of a coffee table because I want to do toy photos with this. I really want to be able to showcase this uh, with, with like figures and display it and stuff and actually have some fun with it. So, you know, I I think someone will do that, but it probably won't be me. It'd be cool. But uh, let's get this lowered down because I want to showcase the details in here. So first off, we have this. And if I'm not mistaken, this is supposed to be like the refresher, the bathroom um, <laughs> from, from season one. So there's that. And you can close that down like so. And then it's going to be tricky to show you all this because it's, it's actually tricky to even access it. But inside of there, you have the weapons cabinet which is where, where's my little baggie of accessories? Where is my little baggie of accessories? Where did I put that? Wouldn't it be something to lose the little baggie of accessories right away? <laughs> it's not lost. I mean, it's obviously right around here somewhere, but I've just placed it down somewhere and and I don't know where I placed it down exactly. Oh, there it is. It's behind the Razor Crest. Okay. So these all presumably go inside of that weapons cache. And I'm probably not going to do that here on the video, but I will showcase everything that is included here. And I mean, there's a lot of really great little, little details here. So we're going to move this back. And we're going to slide that back up. So, I mean, there are big items. There's like this little uh, canister, this canister and the instructions that shows them putting Baby Yoda inside of there, which is kind of cute. I think that might be what he sits in in the cockpit. But then you have these tiny, tiny little thermal detonators. I thought maybe those initially were the... Uh, the, the, the little control stick ball that the baby likes to play with, but these are in fact 
uh, thermal detonators, so those will be easily lost. I'm just gonna try and, uh, don't lose them. I'm gonna put them inside this little container for right now. And then we have all these little backpacks. So the backpacks presumably are meant to go on all of these little clips here. Let's see if we can, there we go, just like that. And there's probably no specific order that you need to put these on. You can just kind of slap them wherever. It appears that there are three repeating sculpts here. So there's three of the same, or four of the same, rather. Am I missing one? Maybe there's another clip somewhere, because there is a fourth one here. But basically, it's the same four sculpts. You have the short, like, duffel bag version. There's, like, this, which almost looks like a camelback, like a water camelback. And then there's this one. And then there's this larger one with, like, a wrench and, like, a tuna can or something there. And those can all be removed, swapped around, added wherever you want on the, uh, on the ship. And then these two here are actually fixed in place. They're glued there. So some are removable, some are not. And I guess you can just use your imagination as to what those backpacks may contain, whether it's food supplies or, you know, stuff related to bounties. Who knows? <laughs> you know, just for the rest of the stream, I think we're going to have to uh, refer to the baby as Baby Yoda, because really what I could do here just for extra pain, specifically for Golden Pro, uh, just Sharpie over Grogu here and write Baby Yoda, you know, Baby Yoda. Spice. Yeah, maybe those bags are just full of spice. Maybe that's how he stays awake on those long space journeys. Some extra spice. Um, but yeah, we've got some cool weapons here. I'm going to, I don't know, try and go over them all here, but some of them are just so small that, and I mean, each one is unique. There's, there's no, there's no identical blaster here. They're all unique. They're all special. Uh, so you got three little blaster pistols there. We've got three more little blaster pistols. Try and line those up just the same as I did there. So you got three more blaster pistols. Each one, again, is unique, which is really cool. I can't imagine how that must have been trying to get three molded uh, unique blasters. And then we have three more blaster pistols. Now, fun fact with this top one here, that little, like, whisk piece on the end is actually molded from a Doctor Who prop. Um, this was a blaster style that was used in the uh, original trilogy of Star Wars, and some of those props were borrowed from the old, like, 1960s Doctor Who sets and, like, movie sets, and yeah, that's, that little end of the blaster is actually from I think a Dalek. I think it's actually from a Dalek, which is just crazy to me that it survived. But then again, Bosk's outfit, the bounty hunter Bosk, his yellow jumpsuit was another Doctor Who prop. So there's a lot of trade off, like trade off between those old shows, you know, the reuse of props. Then we have a, uh, a standard E11 blaster. This is actually appears to be a new mold from like the vintage collection version, but that's cool. Not something that's exactly new, but definitely cool. We've got this blaster, which appears to me like a Death Watch blaster. I don't know if that's what's included with the Death Watch Trooper, um, the vintage collection one that's coming out, but that looks like one of the blasters that they use in the show, at least. And then we have what is essentially Bosk's blaster. So that maybe is like another reference to other bounty hunters. That just looks almost identical to Bosk's blaster. Uh, we have... This very, very unique one. I like that forward handle on it and such. It's quite a curious looking little blaster. I'm sure that that's based off of some real world firearm that they've just like molded with, you know, sci-fi parts as, a, as the physical prop goes. But it's cool that they've gone ahead and recreated each of these uniquely. You know, all these little unique blasters. I think uh, customizers are going to have a lot of fun with these. I think someone will eventually go back and, and mold all of these. It's pretty neat. Um, this, 
I, I could be wrong. I could be very wrong, but I think that this is actually the grenade launcher from Battlefront 2. Like, I think that this is what the troopers use, the heavy troopers use. If you use the three grenade burst, it's a uh, very similar design in, in memory. I could be wrong. I'm not, like, looking at a picture here or anything, but it could be. Um, yes. Uh, oh, hey. Hi, Aiden. How's it going? Um, <laughs> all right, Shiva. Careful there. You might end up on... You might end up in a video. Uh, you don't want that. That'll ruin your career, I'm told. So I'll catch you later, though. Thanks for stopping by the live stream. Do appreciate it. Uh, and then we have what I'm assuming is basically just Cara Dune's blaster. Um, this looks like the heavy blaster that she carries for most of season one. So I'm going to say this magazine just kind of clips on. There we go. I think that's the right place for it. But yeah, there we go. There is essentially Cara Dune's blaster, and that appears to be a unique sculpt from the one that came with Cara Dune, the figure. So again, we're getting all unique weapons as well, not just reuse of the E-11 or Cara Dune's blaster. They've gone ahead and made a new version of that, which is kind of above and beyond. I don't think they needed to do that, but it's appreciated nonetheless. Um, all right, so there's that. Uh, again, you can put all those weapons in there, in that little container back there, but I really just don't want to try and do that on a live stream. If I was doing a proper review of this, I think that'd be a good way to do it, but uh, again, a review of this type of set is just weird to me. I don't think it would perform well on the channel, uh, just because, you know, you're not going to really watch a review of a set that's already a limited production, I guess, unless you really wanted to spend a thousand dollars on it. So I'm just doing this so I could hang out with you guys, unbox some really cool toys and just uh, do a live stream. Cause it's been a while since I've done a live stream. I've been trying to keep up with the channel and keep uploads going, but right now the algorithm or maybe just my content in general has been really brutal and everything's just kind of underperformed. So it's been tough to keep up, you know, life is busy and as it is. So I've been trying to do what I can. Posting consistently has been a goal of mine for this year, but obviously that's already kind of slipped through the cracks just a little bit. But I do have some videos coming. I do have that uh, Halo 4-pack review coming and some other, some cool Star Wars uh, hauls to uh, videotape and then upload. So that'll be down the line sometime soon, I hope. Uh, let's see. So we've got that. We've got that. Let's see if we can... I'm gonna move these blasters off to the side because I don't want to lose them given their given their size. They could be very easily lost to the carpeting. I'm actually gonna put those back inside of this little this little plastic bag here. There we go. So there are more details inside that I don't know how well I can showcase. Um, okay, so no, 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 I'm sorry. This isn't the refresher. This is the carbon freezing chamber. I got that wrong. Um, so that is where you put the, I guess you could put Mithril there and turn him into me frozen. <laughs> so that's a cool little thing. I, I got my locations mixed up in from the show because if you close up these doors here, and again, it's very tricky to, to show here, but that right there is actually the refresher. So basically it's a space urinal <laughs> and they've gone ahead and molded that, which I find quite humorous actually. Let's, let's see, we'll move the camera in just a little bit for these, for these up close detail shots. Look, it's a space urinal. And then you can open up this panel. Oh, that just pops off. Okay, awesome. You can remove that panel there. You can remove that panel there and there we go. That is where like Baby Yoda, yes, I said Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda hides during like kind of the end of, or no, the midpoint of season one where the bounty hunters are looking. And there's like little pillows in there. And there's even a little hammock up there. But again, I wish I could, well, maybe I can. Uh, let's lower the camera down a little bit. I feel like you need one of those really cool lenses, those camera lenses that like go down to a very fine point and allow you to snake inside of small objects like this because 
you could do some really, really neat little shots of this, especially if you were doing like a in-depth review, you could get in here and you could showcase all these little sculpt details that I just can't get on my phone, unfortunately. Uh, but there is all this detail molded in there. There's a place for you to hide the child. There is a space for you to use the bathroom in space, I guess. A very necessary detail for being show accurate, I suppose. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to incorporate that into their displays. That might just be a detail that gets overlooked a little bit. There's that back in place. <laughs> will we see a photo? Will we see a photograph of me through using the toilet? Yeah, you know, somebody surely will post something like that, just because it's it's there. It's there for the taking, you know. Um, and then you have these. You do have these like soft good nets that you can pull away from the wall and you can store things in there. Uh, did the instructions say what to put in there? Let me look here. Nope, I guess it just kind of, yeah, they're just nets. So I guess you could put space junk, you could put droid parts, you could put dead bodies in there, I suppose. The The possibilities are endless. So yeah, there's there's that. And I do love that there are these opening and closing doors that allow you to have little walkways down to the ground. That is so cool. And you know, there is one down here on the end. That's kind of the main one for the carbonite and everything. That goes back up. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's everything for this portion of the interior. We've got the carbonite, we've got all the little things, the doodads, the backpacks, all of that. Um, I'm not gonna put those in there. I'm just gonna put the panels back on. And these backpacks do kind of wanna slide off, so I'm gonna take all those off as well. That can go right in there. Pops in rather nicely, actually. I appreciate that. And now we have to try and get, uh, let's see, how are we gonna get into the cockpit here? I wanna showcase it because I know that there's a lot of detail, but it's a matter of actually being able to get the camera to you know, look down in there and pick up all the paint apps because this is where they went really heavy with paint apps. So there's, let's see, there's this, there's that. There's no button that does the thing for this. So I think you just gotta pop it off. But I'm going to consult the instructions before I actually completely break something. Breaking this piece would be devastating because it's kind of important. Very nice. That actually was not a big deal at all. <laughs> all right, so there, there is the cockpit. Lots of paint apps are going on here, like the seat backs, the lights, all of the control panels have little blue and red dots painted on them, essentially. The controls here have little painted screens. It's once again, just one of the places where they focused a lot of the paint apps. Like back here in the carbonite area, it's pretty much just solid plastic color. It's not really painted, but in here where it's kind of the focus, the focal point of this, it is very nicely painted, very nicely detailed. And you can put, I'm gonna try and get him into a pose here that would allow him to sit down, but you can put the Mandalorian at the controls, of course, and the, that soft good cape really does come in handy here because you can, with some finagling, you can get him into position just like so. You can have this little container there. Now, I don't recall that the baby was sitting here. Baby Yoda was sitting like right here. So I feel like they've kind of shrunk it down this way because I feel like these chairs should be closer to the Mandalorian and allow him to like have the child right here and you know reaching for the, the little control knob and all that kind of stuff. So I don't really know. I don't know if that's exactly accurate or not, but it's uh it works. It's functional. It is a it is a pilot's chair at the very least. So yeah. Baby Gogurt. 
Oh man, Gogurt. What a what a flashback to two thousand eight Disney Channel. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna try and open these. The card backs, that is. I'm going to try and open the card backs. I'm kind of scared to do that. I'm going to do that off screen in case uh, in case I mess something up. My shame can be uh, not witnessed by anyone. But, you know, just cutting these open. I know I'm, I'm cutting open a very expensive item. But that is, uh, that's how it goes. You know, this Baby Yoda is probably going to be worth, like, my child's college tuition if I ever have children and, you know, they go to college. If the world hasn't burned down by then, then I just probably destroyed their hopes of getting into an expensive college because of this. And no, it's too late. They're open. I did it. I, I did it. It's too late. I'm sorry, Jay, guys. It's too late. Baby Yoda has been freed. I mean, come on, man. You, you can't. You can't keep them. You can't keep them sealed. You can't. You gotta. You gotta enjoy it for what it is. To be fair, I mean this sealed certainly will have its value, but uh, even even open out of box, I'm gonna say that this is still gonna be an extremely expensive product here. So we have the pram and. It is, it is metal, I think. No, no, it's definitely not metal. It's definitely plastic. <laughs> I could have sworn that part of the marketing was that this pram was going to be metal. Now, it certainly is a very nice chrome metal, which is cool, or chrome, chrome paint. Like, you can see how shiny that is. You can probably see my face in there. Hello. Um... <laughs> But it's not metal, and I could have sworn that part of the marketing was like, the pram is going to be metal. Someone, somebody can maybe uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. Breaking news, we have found a guy dead in his room. It seems he died from a heart attack. The reason of death is because some YouTuber by the name of Rust Belt Collector saying Baby Yoda instead of Kroku. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that happens, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The police are going to come get me for that one. So the other thing is I noticed in the control panel that little, uh, that little, I don't know what it is, a, a control stick is missing the, the ball. And I thought, well, that's strange. I didn't see that ball in any of the, um, any of the, it's like sculpted into there, which is cool because it's not, uh, it's not going to get lost that way. I feel like something that small would get so, so quickly lost. But right there, it's adorable. It's in his little arm. His arms are actually uh, ball jointed, so you can kind of pose those around. They do pop out rather easily, but I mean, it's kind of tricky to articulate something this small. His head is on a ball joint as well. It's it's just cute. It's a little baby Yoda. It's a Grogu. It's uh, the child. It's 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 Yaddle. That's right. Look at that. We'll just put him right there. He's gonna he's gonna fly today. And uh, what else is, this? oh, he comes with, I guess this is like a little bowl. He comes with a tiny, tiny little bowl from the planet where they meet Cara Dune. So that can go right there and instantly probably get lost. A lot of these little details, I'm glad they included, but I'm also just terrified of the moment that I look away because they're going to be gone. <laughs> uh, and then of course you have, you do have the pram and the, uh, the little fabric insert. It's a plastic fabric insert, but you have that. That can be removed. You can see the paint apps inside of there, or you can put it back in there, and you can put the child in there, and there you go. So actually, let's, let's see. Maybe that's a little bit better. You can kind of put the pram in the control center right next to Mando, that gets him more into the position that you see in the show. And that might actually be what he's setting in when, uh, when he pulls, like when he's messing with the radio and when he pulls the little, the little control 
ball off of the control arm there. I don't really know what it is, but when he does the thing in the show, that might be what he's sitting in. He might be sitting in the pram. So it's cool, there's room to do that. I'm gonna move this and put this with the blasters because I don't wanna lose it. Like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> and you know what? I am going to keep the Jawa on card. I know that that kind of defeats the whole live stream unboxing partially, but I'm gonna keep this one on card. It looks really nice here. The artwork is a really good shot of that Jawa with like the necklace and the, the egg there. But um, this one, I just don't feel like I need to open. I'm gonna get a couple off-world Jawas loose just from the single card release. So I don't need that one opened and I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, that can just be, that can just be what it is. It can just, it can just be a carded figure for now. Maybe someday I will decide to open it, but for now, for now, it'll be the collector's item out of this unboxing. <laughs> Again, I'm not doing any of this for like for value. I think it's a really cool piece regardless. And so, um, you know, if I open it, if I close it, if I just put it on a shelf somewhere to get dusty, that's, you know, I, I'm enjoying it either way. But let's close that back up. Um, I'm... I'm pretty much done. Like, I don't think that there's anything else that needs to be shown here. So what I'm gonna do here now is close everything back up and make sure all the small parts are stowed away so that we don't accidentally lose those somehow, because that would be bad. And then I'm gonna put it on the display base, because I think that that's really one of the best ways to showcase everything that is here and get on the shelf or something. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to shift this camera back around. Bear with the, uh, the nuisance of all that. And... Pushing the... Pushing the button that does the thing allows that to pop back in place. Reattach the engine. Remove the landing gear. And we'll set that back down so we can take a look here. Some dust got on that, but we have this really, really cool display base. Nice, the Mandalorian in silver shiny lettering there. Then again, there's these acrylic little base pieces here that should, should snap down into place. Yeah, I think I got a really kind of crank on them to make sure that they go down all the way. There we go. That looks really nice. So, gonna move this beast again all the way off screen. Put that centered. And now, for the grand reveal, there's a little slot that lines up on the bottom here. There we go. Just like so. And now let's adjust the camera <laughs> again. But right there, that is I think the coolest way that you can display the Razor Crest. Uh, I mean, yeah, what a, what a beautiful way to showcase everything, having it kind of flying. Now, the only thing that really is missing, I suppose, would be to have some sort of like acrylic plastic bits, kind of like the Hot Toys jetpacks, you know, have some acrylic flames coming off the back of the jet engines there. That would have been a really nice inclusion, but probably would have made us have to get to like another tier or something crazy like that. So, uh, kind of, you know, just a, it'd be a quality of life thing. Definitely not something that's necessary, 
Though if they didn't include the uh, the escape pod and they included those, I would have out of traded those. I would have traded those two things. I would have traded out the escape pod because I don't think that that's necessary, and taken some some flame effects for the engine. But regardless, there it is. There's the Razor Crest, all unboxed and in all of its glory. We waited almost a year to get this in hand, and I'm I'm really pleased about it. I mean, of course the the campaign ended right before it blew up in the show, so I mean, there's that. But uh, <laughs> I'm not really mad about that. I think it's a cool ship regardless. And I mean, heck, you could do a lot with this. Like if you just didn't even want it for the Mandalorian, again, if Empire Toy Works paints his up and makes it look all like 80s, 90s retro, I I will love that. I will love to see what he does with that. I will not be doing that with this one. If I had two, if I was rich and I had two, then maybe I would paint one. But this is staying as the Razor Crest, as you see it here. And hopefully within like the next week, um, I spotted some really cool terrain out at one of my local parks. So I'm hoping to go out there and set this up and do a shoot with it there. But uh, until then, uh, it's going to be on a shelf and it's going to look awesome. So just as like a quick little recap, you know, going through everything, we have the Razor Crest, Baby Yoda, Gragu, the Child, and the Mandalorian are in the cockpit there. Four carbonite bounties, which I absolutely love, especially this Rodian. I just, I like how he's in a fetal position, like he's terrified or something. It's, it's quite interesting. Just the different, the different figures we have here. And honestly, it'd be kind of fun to make one, like mold this and then find a way to insert your own character and, and have Jar Jar Binks in one of these. If I can find a way to do that, I absolutely will do that. <laughs> And yeah, there's, there's that. Um, you have all these good accessories. Already one of the uh, thermal detonators was on the floor beneath me. So I'm definitely going to lose those in rapid succession. Got the, uh, the cards, the empty Baby Yoda. That says Baby Yoda, by the way. It doesn't say Gragu. That's mistranslation. It's actually Baby Yoda. And then you have the off-world Jawa Elder. I, I didn't read the Elder part earlier, I don't think. You have 2,000 subs. What... Wait, you have 2,000 subs. What do you, if you were rich, you are rich? Oh, <laughs> I mean, hey, I am very, very grateful for all 2,000 of my subscribers. You guys are absolutely awesome. And I guess technically it's 2,820 or thereabouts. So I'm very grateful for all of you guys that have you know, subscribed, followed, and just enjoy the content for, for such that it is. The inconsistent uploads, the, uh, the sometimes random content, because I bounce between Star Wars and Halo and just random related content. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, so many people have enjoyed it thus far, you know. Uh, it's never really going to be a channel. I don't think that I can do full-time or even part-time. I think it's going to just be, you know, kind of a hobby that occasionally gets uploaded to and unfortunately that does mean my upload schedule is going to be uh, kind of consistently based on my life schedule more than anything. I can't really uh, predict when or where I'll be uploading but I try to be as consistent as possible and I try to be upfront, you know in the community tab or over on Instagram like hey you know not going to be uploading for a while or or whatever I don't just want to leave the channel vacant turn it into a ghost town channel um, but yeah, so far it just seems like uh, analytics-wise, it seems like the algorithm is kind of uh, punishing a little bit, and, and I don't really know why. Um, I've tried changing thumbnails, I've tried changing uh, descriptions and shortening videos, lengthening videos, changing my titles, but so far I have not found the secret sauce. And I mean, again, it's not a numbers thing for me, I just enjoy making this content, I truly do. But you do want a lot of people to see it, you know? It's it's a give and take. So, you know, I'm trying to find that balance. I'm okay with being a uh, a small channel, but hopefully, hopefully this year we do see some growth because it'd be fun. It'd be fun to build a bigger and bigger community with each upload and, you know, just see that all come together. It's all coming together, but we will see what happens in, in this new year. I do have some really fun content. Um, Hopefully this week I'll have another video uploaded as well. I'm thinking it will be either the four pack 
uh, review for Halo, or it will be an update to my most wanted figures of 2022 because I've had some very impressive uh, finds that pretty much nullified my entire figures I'm searching for in 2022. So that's been kind of exciting, but uh, also kind of like, well, well, now what do I look for? <laughs> Just, you know, we'll, we'll, you guys will see when that gets uploaded. But um, you, you know, I, I really don't know what you're trying to say, Jig. <laughs> uh, unless I use card destruction to send those Exodia pieces into your graveyard. I don't know what that means. Is that a reference to something? Probably. Do I get the reference? No. <laughs> uh, did I do a review on the Bad Batch 4-pack? I have not found the Bad Batch 4-pack yet. Um, I did find Tech, or Tick, as, uh, as Omega would say, but I have not found the 4-pack yet. I don't know if that's going to show up, because it seems like um, a lot of the... A lot of the what's that line even called? It's not Galaxy of Adventures, but a lot of those, the small scale figures have just not been uh, stocked lately. It seems like they put a bunch on clearance and then never restocked. So locally, I don't know if I'll be able to find it easily. And if I do, it'll probably be way later than a review is even worth <laughs> uploading, but we'll see. If I find it, you might, you might see a review of it. If not, uh, I don't know. We'll see, you know, it's all dependent on what I can find in stores. Um, I'm hoping to find some of the new G.I. Joe classified figures. Again, those reviews just don't do terribly well on the channel, but I love talking about G.I. Joe. So again, that comes down to just making fun videos. And I love talking about G.I. Joe. So if I find the Cobra Vipers or the Cobra Bats, those will definitely be reviews here on the channel. And, uh... What are the other ones that are coming out? There's there's some new ones coming out for G.I. Joe, and I... Oh, like uh, Spirit. Spirit's coming out, and the uh, the Tiger Force Viper. I don't know when those are supposed to release, but all those Target-exclusive ones, I actually managed to get my pre-orders in on those, and hopefully they will arrive. Hopefully. Fingers crossed that they just arrive soon, but... You know, with pre-orders and with just the state of the world as it stands, I realize that pre-orders are subject to change. Whether it's cancellations, delays, you name it, something like that will probably happen. And, you know, the my reviews are subject to what the mailman delivers to me every single day. So <laughs> I, can only, I can only review what I have in hand and hopefully they don't get pushed back. Hopefully there's new releases to actually talk about, but... If not, I might try and explore a bit more of um, the fun content, you know, like just talking about figures and stuff like that. I don't really know what to do because I don't want to, um, I don't really want to copy like other YouTubers, like especially uh, JCC2224, you know. I don't want to step on any of his toes by doing um, like a clone corner type video or something like that. You know, he has a very... Uh, a good handle on that with his channel and he does that very well that's what he's known for and so i don't want to try and do something like that but i want to find a way to just have conversational videos talking about uh certain designs things like that that's where i came up with the concept clone trooper videos because i love the concept clones and i love talking about how they went from art to figures and you know all the steps in between so Maybe I'll do something along those lines, but there's only so much concept art and there's only so many figures that were made off the concept art. So I feel like I'd run out of that pretty quickly as well. So <laughs> we'll see. Again, we'll see. It's it's a new year. We're starting it off strong with the Razor Crest. And I think that there's going to be a lot of fun videos, uh, hopefully, hopefully soon. But we'll just have to wait and see. Um, yeah. So there we go. There's the Razor Crest. I've been kind of rambling there for a little bit, but it's fun to hang out on live streams and just chat. So we've been going for almost 90 minutes, so almost an hour and a half. <laughs> That's insane. I think that is where I'm going to wrap up this live stream, though. So I'm really grateful for all you guys that stopped by for a little bit, for a long time, for the whole thing. Uh, you guys are awesome. I appreciate that. And this is awesome as well. I'm so excited to have this in hand I'll do some toy photography with it over on my Instagram, hopefully with this, within this week. 
Um, I have some I have some shots planned for that. And until the next video, I will talk to you all later. I hope you have a wonderful evening, noon, or night, and I will catch you all in the next video.